Hello everyone, who's ready for some F-Zero Awesomeness? We're gonna load up some incredible games from the Legacy series right here now. But let's load up RetroArchic Stream via the Auto Beam Injector and my latest core set, which is gonna be going out within the next day or so. Low content Star directory, dummy. We're gonna load up the original F-Zero X on Nintendo 64 via Glupin 64 core, which has the best performance and speed out of all of the Nintendo 64 cores on any of the mini classics. So here we go. Clupin. We're also going to be utilizing Parallel today because it needs another thing just wise in order to run some ROM hacks and such. Uh, but first of all, let's do have Zero Watch. And we are running this with the default PlayStation Classic controller, which is going to be a huge problem. You'll see in a moment here. And I'm sure many of you have already tried this and wondered why you couldn't play the game. I'm going to show you why right now. But we're going to get in game so you see exactly what problem you're going to run into because remember the PlayStation Classic controller does not have analog which we kind of need even for Metal Gear Solid. I can accelerate, I can break, I can wreck. That's all I can do. But we're going to go into Retro Settings, Input, and again this is the PlayStation Classic default controller. Uh, user 1 binds, going down to where it says left analog. And when I showed this tutorial on the SNES Classic over a year ago, we did not have right, left, down, and up. I actually had to show you how to know which axes were which. But uh, here it's nice and easy. You hold the X button down, hold right. Then we're going to hold left, down, and then up. And if you'd like to revert this to the default perimeters, simply push the start button, and then you got it. And I would highly recommend not remapping your selector start button, otherwise you're going to end up having to reinstall the injector and or retro art, depending on what mini classic you're on. Just leave those buttons alone. And of course you can also go up to bind default all and revert all back to default. Again, don't mess with the selector start button or you're going to screw yourself. We're going to resume the game now. We're going to retry and we're going to try to get first place on this track while we're here. I'm a big F-Zero fan all the way back from the Mode 7 intensity of the original Super Nintendo version. All the way up to, of course, F-Zero GX on the GameCube. Phenomenal game, and along with Ninja Gaiden, it's actually uh, one of the two hardest games I've ever played. Try doing the quest mode, adventure mode, should we say, in F-Zero GX for GameCube. It's also the main and primary sole reason I even kept my Wii all these years, because of the backwards compatibility support for GameCube games. So I can play my Fantasy Star uh, episode Plus 1 and 2, and of course uh, F-Zero GX, Metroid, Prime, uh, and other games such as Wave Race. I mean, they were incredible games and I love them. I really wish the Wii U would have backwards compatible support. But yes, try Ninja Gaiden on Xbox and or F-Zero GX on the GameCube and you're going to have your hands full as far as challenge factor. I'm using a vehicle right now that uh, has better grip and speed overall. But if I get hit a few times, I'm pretty much decimated. We're going to play a few other games in the series that people might not be aware of, uh, especially the 64 disk drive expansion, which was supposed to be purportedly originally made by Sony, and we would have had Final Fantasy VII on it. But due to memory limitations, we never even had that because Sony went and did their own thing, and that worked out for the best. Because we have so many Final Fantasy game sequels later. And even, uh, as far as that is concerned, even Atari, uh, originally was going to try to have a system by Nintendo, and they ended up doing the 7800 instead, because Nintendo wanted to get their foot into the United States, and they asked Atari, who already had the Atari 2600 and 5200, if they could help them out, and Nintendo, uh, Nintendo and them would not agree to things, because Nintendo wanted a bigger cut than Atari would have allowed, so Nintendo and uh, Atari did not work out, and Atari ended up making the Atari 7800, which many of you probably never even heard of. But we're going to load up the 64DD drive version right now. This is not going to work as well on the SNES, NES, and Mega Drive Classic, so uh, I wouldn't even bother. The PlayStation Classic has much more memory to utilize for it. And this is a very, very special ROM port version of it, done by Zoinkiti. And I'm going to show you right now. F-Zero Expansion Kit. And uh, this is awesome. We're going to run it with Parallel, and I'm going to show you why you need to use Parallel to run this right now. There's a very specific perimeter. It's going to help out with games like Donkey Kong uh, 64 as well. It is the 8 megabyte expansion pack, which is on the original hardware, and we need to utilize it for various ROM hacks here. You're going to see what I mean in a moment here. 
So yes, we got 64 DD, and there's one compete. We're not going to have sound on this. There's no sound, so play like Megadeth, Metallica, Slayer, Anthrax, Pantera, whatever you want to play. But we're going into the core options right now. And you're going to notice there's one specific option here. Enable expansion pack RAM. This does not work properly on lower memory systems like the Mega Drive, SNES, and NES Classic. That is why when you try to load games that need to use it, such as the Mario Hack, you're simply going to crash. But on the PlayStation Classic, they're going to work. There's not a whole lot we could do about that. I mean, there are ways to do it, but they're not going to run very fast nonetheless. But uh, we notice here uh, we're going to have the three primary course tracks here, Jack, Queen, and King. But we also have the DD1 Cup, DD2 Cup, and we could create our own courses and even modified vehicles, which is awesome. We're going to do this incredible uh, Mute City 4 Slim Half Pipe. This is awesome. It's almost like a roller coaster bobsled uh, ride right here. We're going to use my same vehicle with the better boosting grip but lesser body until we unlock other vehicles. Obviously, uh, you could use cheats if you'd like to unlock them, but I'd play this kind of legitimately. Again, play your Megadeth, Slayer, Pantera, Anthrax, whatever have you will. And there was a phenomenal concert many years ago, because many of you know that James had filled. And I'm going to do this one more time here. Input. User 1 binds. Again, go down to the left analog. And we're going to reprogram this again. Right. Up. Left. Down. And there are other ways of doing this, but this is my favorite and personal fide way of doing it. Resume. Okay, let's try to get through this crazy course here. And this is insane. I mean, I'm going to get hit quite a few times because of the narrow intensity of this bobsled roller coaster ride. If you like games like this, definitely check out Roll Cage Stage 1 and 2 on PlayStation 1. You can't do better than those. I mean, aside from the very, very well-known Wipeout series. Look at this crazy insanity here. You better damn well use your uh, energy uh, reviver at the end of every lap here. Or you're going to be screwed. Or you can use a vehicle that has a more powerful body and have nothing to worry about, but then you're never going to get first place. You really, really need a faster vehicle to get first place or some incredible skill. I'm probably not going to get first place, but I'm doing decent here. And again, I'm going to show you a few other games because there's this other incredible hack that is also going to be running. You can run it... Uh, if you do a ROM hack, some of them are going to need 8 megabyte expansion like with Parallel, but other ones you're going to be able to run with Gloopin. So try to load it with Gloopin first, and some of the Gloopin ones will actually work on the S, NES, and of course the Mega Drive Minis, but the ones that require the expansion pack are going to be more problematic and might crash on you. And I'm going to show you the F-01. It's a climax. It takes uh, kind of a rebuild up with new textures and everything, and it is incredible. Philippi uh, did work on it. Philippi uh, Brodier, he did an incredible job. And I'm going to show you as well as the original Game Boy Advance Climax. I'm, I'm doubtful that I'm going to get first place on this. But we'll do a little bit more of this track. Just need a little more practice. And many racing games have two different types of AI. You know, the artificial intelligence. We have Need for Speed, which has pretty much a rubber band AI. No matter how well you do, enemies will actually catch up to you at the last second. Even if they have to go through walls and uh, borders of the stage... Just look at their little uh, radar on the map as far as how they move, and they'll go right through walls to catch up to you. Then you have, like, Gran Turismo, and no matter what, they're pretty much always predestined to move the same path. That's why you could upgrade in career mode, campaign mode, whatever, the simulation disc, and easily overpower them once you upgrade and such. Yes, I need a little more practice on there. But yes, we're going to load up the uh, Climax one right now. I'm going to show you a few other cool tweaks you could do. And there are other 64 DD games, like we have uh, Desimon 3D, Doshin the Giant. And then, of course, we have Japan Pro Golf. And not all these work. I mean, only a few of these actually work. Then we have a bunch of Mario Paint-style games, like Artist Paint Studio, Polygon Studio, Talent Studio. Then we have SimCity, which is actually kind of cool because it has a 3D perspective, like the PC mode. But again, we're going to load up the F-Zero Climax uh, hack right now. Right here, F0X, Climax. We're going to load this with Gloopin. Again, try your hacks with Gloopin first. And I'm actually going to include the hack, not the ROM itself, but the hack that you can patch using Lunar IPS. You're going to be going to the Extras, 
perm sheath patch in, and then you're going to pretty much load up linear IPS and the hack. And again, uh, if you ever have a game crash like that, it's because you run out of memory. Exit RetroArc, re-enter RetroArc, and you clear the memory cache. And I'd recommend doing this on PSP, Dreamcast, and of course Nintendo 64, because they use quite a bit of memory. So again, we're reloading RetroArc here, and we're going to load up that same game. And uh, let's go to F-Zero Climax X. Great, great hack again. And we're going to lose the, the Gloopin' Core. Again, try Gloopin' first. If it doesn't work, then try Parallel. And again, this is primarily for F-Zero uh, games on the PlayStation Classic. Because some ROM hacks are simply not going to work on the other Mini Classics. Okay, it's running fine. There's another thing I'm going to show you right now. If you ever have, like, an issue where the game is not running as fast, there's a little temporary memory exploit you can do as well. And again, we're going to go back into the input here. User 1 binds. Right, left, down, up. And I'm actually intentionally doing this so I can show you guys and gals how to do it and it'll be committed to your memory. There's a way to make this more permanent if you'd like to. I'll show you that too. Okay. Resume. Okay. You're going to see this track as well as the original Game Boy Advance version of it. To see the differential here. Again, this is an absolutely incredible job. All new build-up textures. I can only imagine the amount of work that went into this, Philippe. An incredible job. Very, very thoroughly impressed. Yes, if you want new F-Zero tracks to play, here you go. Climax 64 DD expansion. Awesomeness all the way here. Not only that, there are other ways you can play F-Zero games as well, because we have the BSX Broadband Satellaview version of our Grand Prix 2, which is also incredible, plus MSU1 full CD soundtrack ones that run with SNES 9X 16 and 18. I mean, they were awesome. So try to get to the first stage here and try a couple more quick games. Then I'm going to show you how to make the controls a little bit more permanent as far as your mapping for the analog to the D-pad. I like to keep them temporary so when I exit, they do not save. The best way to make them permanent is to have no content loaded when you set up the perimeters of the control scheme. I'm getting my butt whooped completely here. But again, I'm so impressed with this right now. I'm going to definitely be coming back and playing 64 DD and this Climax hack. Again, you're going to be able to have the hack. It'll be right in my extras. Perm cheese patch in, along with Lunar IPS. And you simply use the uh, U version, U exclamation point version from the good set of F-Zero X USA and you can easily apply the patch. I should have picked the other ship because I don't have enough speed and grip in order to pull this off. But yes, this is awesome. We're going to move on to, uh, right now, another game. I mean, we got two more games at least to showcase. We'll load up the BSX version briefly. Right here, this is actually a patch version, so we do not need to use BIOS. These run on the real hardware. We're going to run this with SNES 9X 2018. And uh, BSX games uh, can run on most of the cores, but if you're going to be using BIOS, you're going to want to run them on SNES 9X 2016 Bright or 2018. You notice this has the exact same soundtrack from the original F-Zero, which is a little bit disconcerting here. They could have at least used a new soundtrack. So new stage uh, layouts, but same soundtrack. But we're going to fix that in a moment here. It would have been beautiful indeed if they would have had a whole new soundtrack. Again, that uh, F-Zero Climax Nintendo 64 uh, hack that I showed you is actually based off of a game that many of you have never even played because it wasn't even released in the United States. Oh yeah, am I going <laughs> to... Bam! Failure. But definitely check out the PSX version. But yes, that uh, ROM hack was actually based off of Game Boy Advance version that was only released in Japan. I'm going to go to that real quick here. Okay, it's F-Zero Climax and this is Japan for Game Boy Advance. And I like to run this with the GPSB core, which does require BIOS. If you don't want to have to worry about BIOS, just load it with MGBA. It runs fine there too, but I typically use GPSB for most of my games. It does require BIOS. If you're on the SNES or NES or Mega Drive Classic, overclock is almost mandatory in order to run this, uh, some of these cores. Especially MGBA. Remember, when you're playing Japan uh, Japanese games, the X and Circle are typically reversed, especially with PSP and uh, PS1. 
That's why I went back, because I pushed the X button, which uh, would normally move forward in uh, USA games. But since we're in a Japan game, we gotta push the circle button to move forward. And this is the exact same track done from the last game I played of the Climax 64 uh, uh, hack. And it's gonna be a cool differential here. You see for yourself. Six carat from Philip Brodier's uh, hack. And I love that it's an English voiceover-wise. Oops, <laughs> that was a bad start. But very, very cool. Some more F-Zero awesomeness here. And the way I write about the F-Zero soundtrack being the same for uh, Grand Prix 2, I want to fix that with the MSU on full CD soundtrack version. We're actually going to play the original F-Zero on Super Nintendo Mode 7 skill and all, but we're going to swap it out for, of course, the F-Zero GX, my favorite game in the series, uh, soundtrack. But great, great game here as well. F Zero Climax on Game Boy Advance. Not released anywhere but Japan, of course. Not to be confused with the other Game Boy Advance ones. And there actually is a collaboration between Nintendo and Sega for the arcade called F Zero AX as well. Some of you may have actually seen it in the arcade. I don't think any emulator actually plays it, but I would love to see it on an emulator. But arcade wise, you might run into it here and there. I mean, it is pretty obscure, but. It is actually an awesome, awesome game to check out. Check out a video on YouTube of this. Now I'm fifth place. I need to have first place here. I need a shortcut. That Grand Prix 2, if I would have actually done the shortcut right, oh look, that enemy is kind of moving like the uh, crazy enemies. And of course, uh, RC Pro-Am. You know, the enemies that just fly past you and you have no way of stopping them except with their weapons. But uh, our final game of the day is going to be MSU1 version of F-Zero for Super Nintendo. And we're going to load it with a full CD soundtrack, MSU1 style. Uh, I keep going past the folder here. It is in my 64 DD folder. And again, right here, MSU1 version. We're going to load this with the SNES 9X 2018 core. And this is the final game of the video. Absolutely incredible F-Zero GX soundtrack. And there are other ones you can play as well. I mean, there's also a great rock one, some Age of SNES ones, and uh, ones on the various uh, games. I mean, there's even an F-Zero X one if you want to have that soundtrack in this game. But I love the F-Zero GX soundtrack. And I got a horrible start there. If you do the 3 2 one contact and push the accelerate button, the moment the countdown goes down, you get a speed boost, which occurs in many racing games. I'm going to have to make damn sure I get first place in this final game of this demonstration video. Come on, I can do this. The soundtrack is incredible. I never get tired of this amazing soundtrack. Oh, come on now. We need another F-Zero game on the Switch. I mean, we really need it. Even if they bring back uh, GX again, it's a downloadable title on there. Four laps left. I think I should uh, be a cakewalk and get first place here. And that uh, Grand Prix 2, which I flopped on, that little jump that I missed is actually a, an incredible shortcut to get to the stage a lot quicker. When I was talking about Rubber Band AI, some games that don't really, are a little bit more forgiven, like F Zero and Wipeout, are not forgiven. You hit the ends, uh, borders of the stage, you're kind of screwed. But some games like uh, Burnout, on the other hand, you can uh, basically blunt enemies on the side and or shut them, should I say? And you'll have no trouble uh, cornering yourself out, and you can even hit borders of the stages without losing an area of speed whatsoever. Now I still have to say Burnout Revenge on the game, uh, not the GameCube, the Xbox, the original Xbox 360, is still my favorite of all the Burnout games. And I also love that version of Need for Speed uh, Most Wanted. That is a beautiful, beautiful version indeed. Complete with the challenge mode, which is fantastical. It looks like I'm going to have zero issues getting to first place on this. And I could have even used my speed boost there in the bottom right. I forgot about those. Been a while. I got three of those that I built up here. Should be a breeze getting the first place now. And I really love that we have like loop de loops and almost barrel rolls practically in all the other F Zero games. This is completely flat the entire time, as you notice. There we go. First place is no problem whatsoever here. One more lap, first place. And then I'm going to finish the update, guys and gals. I hope you enjoyed the video and this incredible MSU1 full CD soundtrack for F-Zero GX on Super Nintendo version of F-Zero X. This is great. And then I'm going to try to work in some more uh, 
FX go, because I'd like to be able to run games like Star Fox and Stunt Race FX better on the 99 cores, since we do not have Canoe, which runs it great on the S and NES Classic. And of course, if you run the Canoe on the NES Classic, you have to worry about swapping the kernel for the SNES, because the default emulator for the uh, SNES Classic is Canoe, and the default one for NES Classic is Kachi Kachi. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'm going to show you how to revert the controls real quick. I'm going to quit Roger Arc, and I'm going to come back in. We're going to have no content loaded. And this is the best way to do any kind of key binding. I mean, no content loaded. Go down here to user one binds. No, it says right there. You can put start, declare them out, or you can go up to the default bind all. Right there. Now they're all gone. And then when I exit RetroArch, completely after making the change, and come back in, it should be gone. But yes, typically if you do it without content loaded, it'll save. So I only had to do it one time without content loaded, and then all the games I demonstrated should have maintained the settings, the integrity of them all. So there we go. And we're good to go. So take care, guys, and the update will be out within the next day.